In this first recording for Chapter 9, we're going to look at the big overview for inventory, uh, the account itself, and how inventory gets reported. So here we have our big T account for inventory, and I've gone ahead and listed out the various kind of transactions uh, that go in and out of the account. For instance, we start with beginning inventory, and we know that basically we are tracking costs, the dollar cost of the inventory, and also the quantity or volume. So we track dollar cost and the quantity or the volume of the goods. So we start with beginning inventory. If we buy goods, of course, the, the inventory is going to go up. If we return any of those goods, uh, that's going to leave our, our uh, warehouse, and so our inventory will go down. And then also, if we pay early and get a discount, that will reduce our costs. So uh, inventory goes up when we buy and we record it at its original cost. If we get a reduction on that cost, a purchase discount, it causes it to go down. So we've got all these costs going into the account. Costs are going in when we buy the goods. So then we have beginning inventory plus the net of what we purchased gives us our goods available for sale. Uh, of our goods available for sale, generally we will sell those and we remove the cost of the goods that we sold. We will cost those. We saw uh, in Chapter 8, we could cost them on a LIFO, FIFO basis, on a LIFO basis, or perhaps a weighted average basis and other ones as well. But the point being is that costs go in the account and costs are going out of the account. So we buy, costs go in, we sell, costs go out. Now, if we sell goods, it's possible for a customer, of course, to return those goods, and they're going to go back uh, into our warehouse or our store floor, uh, the floor of our store. Okay, so we bring them back in at cost. So then we're going to have our ending inventory. EI stands for ending inventory at cost. And again, that's going to be, you know, on a FIFO, LIFO, or weighted average basis of cost. So ending inventory at cost. Now, we also will actually go in and count the ending inventory. So we'll take a physical count of the goods, and then we apply our cost. If there are fewer goods on hand than what our counting records say ought to be there, we're going to recognize a loss. So if there's been theft or there's been damage to the inventory and we think we can't sell it uh, or it's been broken, uh, we call that inventory shrinkage. And so we'll debit a loss credit the inventory account for the decline uh, in the volume of the goods. We also will look at inventory to see if there's been a decline in what I call the market value or uh, just a decline. I might not use the word market there, but just a decline in value. So we are going to record inventory. Uh, I'm going to scratch out LCM there. I say I didn't get that updated for the new material. We're going to report ending inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value. So then we're going to compare our balance of uh, ending inventory, a balance of cost, and we're going to look at net realizable value. And the whole point here is that we do not, or we, meaning a company, do not want to report inventory above uh, what we think we can actually sell it for or what we're going to receive from our customer. So net realizable value. So in a way, it's going to, it's kind of it's very similar to accounts receivable. We also reported account receivable and net realizable value. For inventory, we will be conservative. The lower cost, we'll compare that with net realizable value. Uh, you know, how much cash do we actually expect to receive from the inventory and compare the two. So if there's been a decline, in value, we're not able to receive as much cash as we thought, we're going to reduce it down. So I want to use exercise three out of your textbook uh, as a demonstration problem of very much looking at comparing and reporting inventory at the lower of cost or market. So I've taken this problem, it gives us quantity, it gives us a cost per unit, so if I took, you know, 1,200 units at $3.20, I think you'll get a total cost of something like $3,840. So if I take quantity times the individual cost, I'll get a total cost. If you do that line by line by line by line by line for each of these inventory merchandise items and add them up, you will get $26,645. 
So at the end of the accounting period, here is our balance in inventory. So we've looked at the big picture on our, my prior screen for inventory. Here is the ending inventory at cost. We've counted the goods, uh, and so we, we have factored in any theft and that sort of thing, and we're down to what physically exists of goods at, at their original cost. Now, we also are given uh, information to help us solve for net realizable value, and I just put it in RV there. Net realizable value is an estimate. We're estimating what we think we can sell the goods for. We subtract the cost to complete and sell the goods to arrive at our net realizable value. So I just took in this first product, the $4.50 minus $1.60 to get $2.90. So we arrive at our estimated net realizable value. And I want to emphasize it's an estimate, so that gives us some, sort of some gray area in accounting. Uh, we might not all agree exactly on what net realizable value should be. Okay, so then I have two values. We have cost, which is already in the account, and we have solved for net realizable value of our items at the end of the year, or whatever the accounting period is. Now I'm going to compare the two and choose the lower of the two. So we're going to be conservative and value inventory at the lower of the two. So I compare cost of $3.20 with net realizable value. So for this first item, net realizable value is the lower, $2.90. So I want to report it at its individual cost of $2.90. Okay, so for the second one, I compare $2.70 with $2.40, and I choose the lower, which is net realizable value, $2.40. So my period in there. And then I just keep going down. The third one, 450 versus 360. Again, net realizable value is a smaller amount. Fourth one, $3.60 with $1.85. $1.85 is the lower amount. And I keep going down. 225 versus $1.85. Net realizable value is the lower amount. Often, by the way, it is not, so this problem is a little unusual that way. Uh, cost of 3 versus net realizable of 310. All right, we're seeing that this time cost is the lower amount, and I'm going to put in the $3 here. So I choose the lower of cost or net realizable value. And then um, the next to the last, $1.80 versus $1.30. $1.30 is the lower amount. And then lastly, $4.70 versus $4.50. 450 is the lower amount. So I saw for lower cost of market, we only had one item where cost was the lower. And again, I want to emphasize that's not always, that's not the norm, but anyhow, it is in this problem. So we will just go with it. Then I need a total value for my final inventory. So here's where I'm going to take uh, my quantity. So there. Are, so for the first item, there's 20, 1,200 units or 1,200 items. We want to report those to two dollars and ninety cents. So I take volume of 1,200 times 290, and I'll get this three thousand four hundred eighty dollars. So I'm merely taking quantity times the lower cost or uh, net lower lower of cost or net realizable value to get my final inventory value. So I just do that line by line. And then I'm going to see, I want to report inventory then at this bottom line amount, 21565 So what we've done then is we have solved for the account should have this balance. This is what we want reported on our balance sheet. So ending inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value. And that's what we want to report on the balance sheet. So when you're doing... Uh, this in Wally Plus, that's all the further that the problem will actually ask you to solve. I want to go a step further because uh, I actually don't demonstrate exercise four and it's actually going to have you make the journal entries. So let's look at, here's what's in the account, here's what we need. We need to reduce the account by 5,080, so we need to make an adjusting journal entry. And when we make this adjusting journal entry, there are two options. One is I can just debit a loss account for the 5080 
and I can reduce my inventory, or I might create this allowance account, much like we have for accounts receivable. Remember the allowance for doubtful accounts, except this is going to be called the allowance to reduce inventory down to net realizable value. So I can do it uh, credit inventory directly, or I can create this allowance account. Now in your textbook, it tells you in the homework, it's going to have you use the allowance account. But I just want to point out, you don't have to create an allowance account, but your author has it set up that way. Okay, so one is to debit a loss. Uh, the other option is to debit cost of goods sold for the decline in the value. And again, I could reduce inventory, right? We're crediting inventory, or instead of crediting inventory, we could take it to this allowance, credit this allow an allowance account. And I haven't set that up. I'll show you how to use the allowance account when I demonstrate exercise five. So again, the question is, the credit is the same, right? Either I'm crediting inventory or the allowance account, depending on what system I want to set up. The big difference is, do I debit a loss or do I debit cost of goods sold? Debiting cost of goods sold theoretically isn't accurate because we didn't sell these goods yet, right? These goods have not been not have not been sold, uh, so it's really just plugging it there uh, to make you know to get to have a debit and expense it. So if I do debit cost of goods sold, uh, you know that's obviously going to reduce our gross profit on the income statement. So that'll have a direct impact on gross profit. If I debit the loss, then it's not going to have an impact on gross profit, uh, but obviously it will reduce our income on the income statement because losses reduce income. Okay, so that's the big picture of net, uh, reporting inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value and how to go about it. Uh, next, I want to look at exercise five. Exercise 5 is more complicated, and it's actually more thorough. So now we're going to get to see uh, how this whole process would work, accounting period after accounting period, what the income statement would look like, and what the accounts would look like. So Exercise 5 has this information. You've got it in your notes that you should have printed out uh, and have right in front of you. So here we have January 31st balances. Uh, inventory at cost, inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value. So let's go put those in our T accounts. So we know that, uh, again, on, on February 1, inventory has a cost of $15,000, but the lower of cost or net realizable value is $14,500, again, on February 1. So that's what we want to report on the balance sheet. So if we use the allowance account, I need a credit, right? A debit of fifteen thousand minus a credit of five hundred will give us a net asset amount of fourteen thousand five hundred. So on January thirty first, the company then would have debited a loss due to the decline of inventory to net realizable value and would have credited that allowance account five hundred dollars. And so just kind of give a check mark here, posting the credit of the $500 to the allowance account. So uh, actually, I, so that's on, on February 1 or January 31st, which essentially is the same thing as the very beginning of February. So I see I've got January 31 here. The adjustment actually would be made dated then, but January 31 and February 1's beginning balance are going to be the same amount. Okay. So let's keep going with this then. At the, so that's beginning of February. At the end of February, so notice, uh, here's the, kind of our income statement. And when we saw for cost of goods sold, that's merely taking, you know, beginning inventory plus our net purchases, gives us our cost of goods available for sale. And of our goods available for sale, right, either we have sold them, right, or we have not. So really, that's what this formula is all about. Taking beginning inventory plus purchases gives us our goods available for sale. Of our goods available for sale, either they're still on hand in any inventory or those goods have been sold. So this inventory is merely taking goods available for sale and it's assuming that we know ending inventory 
So we subtract any inventory from that amount, and then by default, we have our cost of goods sold. That's all that's doing, uh, that's going on here. Okay, so we have beginning inventory at cost. Uh, we have purchases this month of $17,000. So 15 plus 17 gives us goods available for sale of $32,000. And then the company will count their inventory at the end of February, and they cost it at $15,100. So of the goods available for sale, if they still have $15,100 on hand, then that means they must have sold the, the other amount, the $16,900 is the cost of goods sold. Okay, and we know in the big picture of things, our sales revenue less the cost of the goods sold gives us gross profit. Sales as cost of goods sold is gross profit. That's going to be 12100 here in the month of February. Okay, now let's go put some of this in our T accounts. For instance, we know we already have the 15000 beginning inventory there. Let's report record the purchases and the cost of goods sold in our T accounts. So in February, there were purchases of $17,000. That goes into the account, those costs go in, and then costs that go out are our cost of goods sold, $16,900, cost of goods sold. So let's draw our line. So big pick, that's supposed to be a C, by the way, cost of goods sold. So 15 plus 17 minus the 16,9 gives us an ending inventory of 15100 and that's at the very end of February. So the very end of February, 15,100, and that agrees with what we have here on our income statement. Okay, and then the next month, right, uh, this ending becomes beginning inventory. So draw a little arrow there. Ending inventory is the same as beginning inventory. And then we have purchases of $24,000. Add that to the 15,001, and we'll have goods available for sale, 39,100. Subtract our ending inventory, uh, and that gives us cost of goods sold of 22,100. And then we look at the big picture, sales revenue, less cost of goods sold, gives us gross profit of 12,900. And let's go look at that, you know, also, What's that going to look like in the inventory T account? We're going to have beginning inventory. Purchases cause it to go up. Goods sold cause it to go down. So let's go look at the, put those numbers in our T account. So for the month of March, we start with 15100 There were purchases of 24000 The cost of the goods that were sold is 22100 Cost of goods sold. And so at the end of March, that gives us an ending balance of $17,000. And again, this is at cost, right? So ending inventory becomes beginning inventory for April. And then we record a record a report purchases 26,500. Add that to the 17,000 that gives us goods available for sale of 43,500. Of the goods available, if we still have 14,000 on hand, that means that we sold 10,500. Okay, and then sales revenue less the cost of the goods sold is gross profit. Uh, I did this wrong, I that didn't I? You probably caught that. And you probably caught that. 43500 available. If there's 14000 still on hand, that means they must have sold 29500 So I take my sales, less my cost of goods sold, and that gives me the 10500 Okay, and let's go look at how all of that would look in this inventory account. So at the beginning of April, we have 17000 on hand. During April, the company bought 26500 and they sold 29500 cost of goods sold. And so that gave us an ending inventory on April 28th, the end of April, April 28th, $14,000.
And just to show you, that agrees with our ending inventory here. Okay, now let's look at the inventory account. It's reported at cost each month end. So at the end of February, we have a cost of 15, or I say reported, it is um, in the account of the inventory account, we are showing cost. So at the end of February, we have a $15,100 cost. However, the problem went ahead and saw for the lower of cost or net realizable value. So what we did in exercise three earlier, uh, calculating the lower cost or net realizable value, they've already done that for us here in exercise five. So it's going to be 12,600. So we want the net to be 12,600 at the end of February, February 28. Let's put brackets around those dates. So we want the balance to be, or the net amount to be 12,600. All right, so I know that. So if I know there's 15,100 in inventory, and I want the net amount to be 12,600, so the allowance account needs to have a balance of 2,500. 15, 1 minus 2, 2,500 is a balance of 12,600. So I figure out what does the balance in the allowance account need to be. Now I'm going to make an adjusting journal entry to get it there. So I shall just go ahead, I'll put that in red. So we need a credit of $2,000 to get that account up to $2,500. So on February 28th, we are going to debit a loss of $2,500. I really need to leave that in red. $2,500. And we will credit the allowance account $2,500 as well. And by the way, this allowance account, remember it's the allowance to, re to uh, reduce inventory to net realizable value. So the textbook uses a longer title than that. I'm just kind of in lazy. Uh, and just referring to it as the allowance account. But it's the allowance to reduce inventory to net realizable value. So we would have a loss of 2500 That loss would get reported over here on the income statement. So where we saw earlier in exercise three where I could debit a loss or debit cost of goods sold, if we debit the loss, that loss gets reported below uh, gross profit. And I think I made another mechanical mistake. I put, uh, let me correct this, this should be $2,000, shouldn't it? Okay, so I changed this up. So our adjusting journal entry is two grand. When we post that here, we'll have 2,500. And here as well, this will be $2,000. So 2,000 will be our loss. And touching that up again. So see an actual $2,000 loss. Okay, then at the end of March, uh, we have a net realizable value of 15600 So we can go to the T account. I can see here is cost. We want the net amount to be 15600 at the end of March. So March 31st, we want a net amount, net amount on the, on the balance sheet of 15600 Okay, so to get it there, 17,000 minus what gives us 15,600. I need a balance of 1,400 here. So if I only need this to be 1,400 and there's 2,500 in the account, I need to debit the account to bring it down. So I'm going to debit the account $1,100. So at the end of March, we're going to debit the allowance to reduce inventory to net realizable value, and it's as if we have recovered prior losses. So I'm going to have a recovery of the loss of inventory and debit the allowance account. Now let's go look at where we had, you know, a $2,000 loss. Now we've got this recovery here in March. So we're actually just going to report that as a gain. The recovery of a loss, in essence, is a gain of 1100 And again, that's going to go below gross profit unless we had just been, you know, plugging it all into cost of goods sold, which we do not do in exercise five because um, 
the gain or we should have a gain or loss a separate gain or loss and not take it to cost of goods sold so it tells us to do that in this problem okay and then the last one excuse me uh, net realizable value 13,300 so at the end of April said April 28th I don't know why I did that trying to go so fast I guess uh, so that I don't make too too long of a lecture for you to have to sit and listen through so I get a little rushed and make mistakes so I'll, I'll try to work on that so anyhow on April 30th cost is 14,000 lower of cost or net realizable value is 13,300 so we need the allowance account to have a balance of $700 at the end of April there's 1400 in the account, so if we have a credit of 1400 we want a credit of 700 so we need a debit of 700 to bring it down. So we will debit the allowance account and credit this recovery of a loss, which in essence is a gain of 700 And then that gain, go back over here to the income statement, will get reported here. Okay, so a couple of things I want to point out about inventory. Uh, if I look at that, if I look at the balance sheet, uh, reporting inventory at the lower of cost or net realizable value. So there are inconsistent values getting reported on the balance sheet. So there are inconsistent values getting reported on the balance sheet. Sometimes inventory gets reported at cost because that's the lower amount. Sometimes inventory gets reported at net realizable value because that's the net amount. So it is inconsistent. But, you know, being conservative and recognizing revenue uh, at, at the lower cost or net realizable value is more conservative feature of accounting, and that's why we are reporting it that way. But it does lead to some inconsistencies. So it's not, you know, a 100% pure thing to be doing. Uh, it violates some other principles. But being conservative is considered more important by the FASB than this inconsistency. And also, you know, so I'll put the word here, conservative treatment. So let's add that. So we are seeing some conservative treatment of the values reported for inventory on the balance sheet, but in order to be conservative, there's some inconsistency in how we're reporting inventory. Uh, so, you know, the question is, are we reporting at cost or net realizable value? Net realizable value is really the more relevant value. So if I go back to the conceptual framework, Relevance is a, is a high concern, reporting relevant information. However, cost is representational faithful. So that representational faithfulness, it meets that criteria, criterion. And I just abbreviated representational faithfulness. So we're really having to choose between representational faithfulness and reporting something that is relevant. So that, that uh, sometimes, you know, you can't, can't do both. Okay, that gets into reporting inventory.